you either die a hero or live long enough to be a villain. And in the case of Steve Harvey, he's living long enough to become the villain. Because I feel like we are officially in the exposed Steve Harvey era. Like before the Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp interview, Steve Harvey's biggest stripe on his legacy was his go digging wife or this comment he made to Monique on his show. We, I've done nothing wrong. When you tell the truth, you have to deal with the repercussions of the truth. We black out here. We can't come out here and do it any kind of way we want to. Let me, Listen oh, to me. Your husband yes. can't be the Sydney that he really is out here. Let me tell you They're something. Not, that flexing, Let me we got to flex something. a different way. We Let out me. here in a game. This the money game. This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this is the, the money, money game. game. But I, we in the money something. game. And we you cannot sacrifice game. yourself. The we best are. thing you can do for this poor people is not be one of them. You cannot help them. We're in the money game. Home. But let me tell you what the game is before the money game. Like before the money game, it's called the integrity game. And we've lost the integrity worrying about the money. But Mo, and wait a minute. If wait I minute. crumble, if you my crumble. children crumble, my grandchildren crumble. I cannot, for the sake of my integrity, stand up here and let everybody that's counting on me crumble so I can make a statement. There are ways to win the war in a different way. Openly admitting to selling out your integrity for a check was a wild statement. And many black folks were pretty worrisome about those comments. Because as black folks, like, we walk around with a cocoon radar. And when we hear those comments, it's given off very much so cocoonish, right? But... You know, I'm not, you know, like most people, right? You know, I give you the pleasure and the luxury and the privilege of cocooning in peace. But where most people have an issue with these Steve Harvey comments is it came off as cocoonish. But then after the Cat Williams interview, it became pretty clear that Steve Harvey wasn't just cocooning in peace, but Steve Harvey was being used as an agent and a tool against other people in the industry at the will of the power structure. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit. Then you ask, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over cable and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have a range. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. The words of Cat Williams on Steve Harvey, even though they were hilarious and they were funny, they still had some truth to it. Because after that particular interview, that was like the initial starting point for the Steve Harvey Exposed era. Because since that interview, people has been going back and digging up clips of people speaking on Steve Harvey treacherous deeds in the industry. Okay, so tell he me about never said thank you. Well, so what's up with you and Steve, man? I ain't nothing, I ain't nothing with me. He's, uh, well, Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. On what show? On, when he was on his the, the, the bullshit talk show he had, and he did he he did all my Halloween material one Halloween. I'm watching that. Uh, somebody called me and said, man, homeboy doing your material. So he did my whole Halloween run. And I know he didn't think of it. You know, this this is true stuff that really happened to me. Mm -hmm. And so my thing is, you don't have to do that, homeboy. Mm, right. So you know, motherfucker, you made enough money, ass. You know, <laughs> wow. you made enough money. You did enough. You know what? Why are you on my material? Right. You know what's that about? You right. know. It sounds like Steve Harvey played the industry game pretty perfectly. Steve Harvey got to a point where he was at the top, and he made sure to stay at the top by stealing material, joke, and content from the lesser black comics who are on the up and come up, right? Because these, these like industry executives and these people at the very top of Hollywood had no idea who these small comics were. So Steve Harvey, who knew that, yo, there's this whole industry and economy of underrepresented comics who nobody know about who's funny as hell, yo, their material is up for grabs because I can steal it, nobody would know and they will give me credit first. So, it seemed that's what Steve Harvey was doing. Ooh. Steve Harvey is my brother. Yes. And I love him. I want to yes. be clear. 
Yes. However, I am the sister that is going to tell the truth. Okay. Yeah. My husband is the brother that's going to tell the truth. Yeah. So when Steve Harvey said on that show, mm-hmm. and he said, "Mo, your husband can't be out here flexing like he do. He can't be who he is. We like what he said. He can't be who he is when he come out here." Let me tell you what that meant, James. On top of the stealing jokes accusations, Steve Harvey would be accused of doing something pretty damning by Monique and her husband. Now, they would accuse Steve Harvey of treating black people pretty poorly while filming the Steve Harvey show. Because again, we don't want the world to hear this and drag them like Monique and I have been, quote unquote, an attempt to be dragged. We just, again, want to say, brother, you our family recognize that come on back let's do it the right way because it's not going to work out in the long run when you're doing things for people that really are oppressing you and it's all just for money when a man says uh uh they want me to screen how many black people come on our show when we went over to cc and he says i'm not going to let these folks mess it up with me his own people that's when it gets different because they want to man how many black people come on his show. That's in the audience. That's in his, in the audience. Is that true? That That's very true. So apparently the program directors wanted a limited amount of black people in the audience at the Steve Harvey show. So it doesn't come across as this is just some nigga production. And apparently when Monique and her husband and everybody knew about this, it, it, you know, and they presented to Steve Harvey to speak up for his people, to fight for more black people to be in attendance. Steve Harvey said, these black folks ain't gonna ruin it for me. I ain't speaking up there. I ain't gonna let these black folks ruin it for me. So apparently Steve Harvey has been pretty staunch and cemented in his stance of, I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to get to the top. And if that comes with me not speaking up for black folks, I'm not, I'm not doing it because my family and our pockets is more important than the pockets of other black folks, which again, if somebody is publicly stating that and they're doing the exact same thing behind closed doors, how can I now have an issue if they've been open with, you know, exactly what their motives are and exactly what their agenda is and they have no issue putting their integrity to the side if it comes for a check. If they've been open about it, I really can't, right? <laughs> like, what can I say about it? But it's not just a race thing because Gary Owens will also admit that Steve Harvey will sell him a dream of moving, you know, to do the uh, Steve Harvey show, uh, put stand up comedy to the side. But then when he, you know, did what Steve Harvey asked him to do and began to work on the Steve Harvey show, they began to pay him pennies on a dollar. The second week, I did two weeks of the Steve Harvey show. I did one day of Hip Hop Squares, the show D-Ray used to host. And I filmed three episodes in one day of Hip Hop Squares and made four times the money I made doing two weeks of the Steve Harvey show. And I go, well, th this is backwards. I'm just a square. I'm one of nine. And I'm not even the host. And I made morning on Hip Hop Squares. And I did being, there's only two people on the show every week, me and Steve. And I go, they weren't even trying to hear anything I said. And this was, keep in mind, this is not on Steve Harvey. This was the powers of be behind the scenes. So now I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not coming back. And then we, we gave a number and they never got back to us. And I, literally they thought I was going to show up Monday. I, I, I was like, I'm not coming. And they, I guess they thought I was coming. Because they got there and I guess they scrambled that Monday. I was like, I told them not coming without a contract. I'm sure more people will come out and speak out against Steve Harvey and his exploitative business practices. But for now, this is all we got. Now, I'm be real. Maybe because the bar is so low in terms of Diddy and Harvey Weinstein that if these are the accusations, just theft <laughs> and underpaying staff and, 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 you know, and creators, you know, I've heard worse accusations, <laughs> all right? Yeah. As long as he ain't sticking his wee-wee in people unconsensually, then I guess he's not the worst. You know, but I'm not going to hold my breath, man. Right? We've heard worse, right? Y'all let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think in regards to the Steve Harvey expose era? 
let me know, right? And if you're still watching, click on this video right here to find out how this no jumper interview will lead to multiple gangs getting indicted. Click on this video here to find out what I'm talking about. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.